against the uh, nurses, just as they have, as you mentioned, in Australia. You know, they, they threaten you, say, you can't have your kid in school. We're going to come after you because the kid is going to be... Uh, Pure totalitarianism. Uh, exactly. Or take away benefits. Well, they've been doing this for a long time to nurses. And, of course, the government is putting the pressure on the hospitals financially. So the hospitals put the pressure on the nurses. So we talked about that, Alex, for, I guess, about three-quarters of the interview. And then she made this amazing uh, recount of what she had seen in neonatal care where they gave vaccines to young babies, even though they knew they weren't in physical condition, even though they knew that they were going to have a massive reaction to it, they just kind of laughed and said, get the beds ready. Here's that quote from her. I think we are doing them too young. I think we are doing way too many at once if you just look at how fast the schedule has grown. But I think what a lot of people don't realize in in a closed space like a NICU is they've decided that we need to vaccinate these babies on time. Two months after they're born, bam, there it goes. Mm -hmm. This baby could be four months early and still supposed to be inside their mother and weighing three or four pounds and getting the same amount of vaccine as a 200-pound man. Mm -hmm. And 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 I've sat in a a room with all of our on-call staff, physicians and practitioners, like, oh, wow, this is so embarrassing. This 25-weeker never actually required a breathing tube and going on the vent. You know, after he was born, he was so strong. But we gave him his two-month vaccinations, and he got intubated last night. Ha, ha, ha. Oops, how embarrassing. Like, it's funny. Wow. Oh, he can't breathe now. The step-down units are calling the NICU saying, hey, we're going to go ahead and give these four babies their two-month shots today. Make sure you have beds ready because we all know they're going to have increased breathing difficulty, feeding and digestion difficulty, uh, apnea, you know, forgetting to breathe and bradycardia. This is what goes on. Um, and so, so the whole medical ethic of first do no harm just goes out the door so they can just, follow somehow, the vaccine company's schedule. Somehow, it's it's that. just everybody's on this straight, they're marching the line of this is what we need to do. Mm-hmm. And so now that I'm in private practice in the clinics, you just see these kids, they are so sick and it, and they come in sick and, For life. And, and a lot of pediatricians are giving them vaccines while they're sick even though that is a contraindication, and they're just getting yep. kicked while they're down over and over and over again. Kicked while they're down. You want to know what 1984 is, the future is, Winston? A boot stomping on a human face forever. We're going to come back to David Knight after this break and give him the floor. In fact, I'm going to let you host the next segment so you can really focus for six minutes entirely on this, and I'm going to have my lunch and watch in the control room and let you finish up. Uh, but uh, this is what tears my guts out. This is a beautiful, smart woman with like five degrees. We had them on screen. She goes, I don't know what's going on. I don't understand. And then see, they all make jokes because they're so uncomfortable. They want to hurt and kill these kids. The kids stop breathing. They're killing them and then keeping them alive yeah. to have a life of hell, autistic, brain damage, cancer. You shoot the enemy with a two-two-three. 